Hello and welcome, my name is Jonathan Ringer and I'm about to go over how overlays work with Linux packages. Um, so the main benefit of using uh, overlay is that you're able to introduce or change packages that exist on the main package set. And I think this example illustrates this nicely, where here we can think of Linux packages package set here. And each time we apply one of these overlays, we're able to reference packages from the previous um, overlay as well as packages that we introduce and we can create a new package set so here is example one overlay being applied and then we'll have a new package set here and then a second one gets applied and then uh, from the output of the composition of these two we'll have a new final resultant package set so to illustrate this um, what we will do is we'll look at Python and so the example that I have here is um, TensorFlow in which uh, just normally I would not be able to build this TensorFlow bin package off of master. This is more or less just because of a discrepancy in versions. Uh, the TensorFlow estimator package was upgraded for the source build, which is at 1.15. Uh, however, the bin one is lagging behind by a version. However, in this case, I'm going to assume that I want the 1.14. So I'll create an overlay, which then fixates that point to the 1.14 version. So here, um, I already went through the trouble of creating this overlay uh, kind of out of scope of this particular tutorial, but suffice to say that once uh, I uncomment uh, this section here um, and rerun it, uh, you'll see that uh, I'll have a different error. And this kind of demonstrates how uh, overlays work. Um, this overlay in particular was able to inject itself with a new package. So here, um, this is for Python packages, so it's a little different. Usually, most overlays are a little bit simpler. Um, but here, I'm taking a Python package set, and then I'm taking one of the packages that are listed within there, and then I'm going to substitute it with another. So I'm saying that the new TensorFlow estimator one, I would like it to be um, the old one, but I'm going to override some of its attributes, namely the version and the source. Um, one of the gotchas with override adders is that uh, you're not able to do just something like version and set a new version. Um, that's because it's still going to pull from the previous source. So the actual source code is going to be of the previous package, which doesn't help me in this case. So in this case, um, I fetch the new TensorFlow estimator version. And, um, and you can see here that it was able to build and uh, be used. And so then if I go ahead and uncomment the other TensorBoard package, which is what it's currently uh, complaining about here. So like, I already met but couldn't find a requirement TensorFlow board, or TensorBoard specifically. However, the next package's name is TensorFlow TensorBoard. Um, and so then if I go to run this again, um, I did this before to verify that it all worked correctly, but you can see here that now I have a working TensorFlow instance. And so this is one of the benefits of using the overlay is that normally I wouldn't be able to use next packages in this situation. However, uh, with like subtle changes to some of the packages, I'm able to now have a new package set which kind of conforms to my use case. And um, yeah, but there, there is a few issues with this though. So like right now, uh, if, if I were to look um, at uh, where this is located. This is located on my user's overlays, which is fine. Um, in some cases, maybe it's in every instance, I would like to have these packages available. So like uh, the use cases, which I can say and recommend for is like adding new packages. Um, but like, it's very hard to recommend changing packages because you do get into this thing where now there's a mismatch before uh, between your, your channel and what your overlay provides. And so then later on, you may have packages which break just because you forgot about a particular overlay that you created months ago. Um, and now there's a package version which is causing you issues. Um, so uh, what to do about this? Well, one thing that I can do is I can instead of doing it where it's across my entire user, I can do it on a per environment basis as well. So let's say like for the TensorFlow example, I'm likely to only ever use this uh, if I'm doing some machine learning. Um, and so then I will probably have a repository where I'll have a shell.nix um, where I can then just import those. So like here's a shell.nix which then uses 
uh, uses the overlays. Uh, if we go to the TensorFlow overlay, um, you can see that I largely just copy and pasted this from my local one. Um, but the benefit of this is that how it gets leveraged is only within scope of this project. So now, um, if I were to do something like, uh, let's move the one from my local packages, so config. Packages, uh, overlays to this package is config overlays like overlays back. Um, now, if we try to build that again, you'll see that this should fail. Yeah, um, it's trying to build because it, it's not able to work again. Um, but now, if I do Nick shell, uh, you can see that I have my Python working as well as then when I go to import TensorFlow. I'm still able to import TensorFlow fine. Um, and then let's just look at the version here, 1.114. So um, yes, this is uh, just a quick example of how to use an overlay, uh, both on a user installation level as well as a shell. And uh, hope you enjoyed it.